I've also found that it's not really with guys that I've hit with vision thing. It's since they're top down swings, they're committing to it out of the Early, head. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. A guy like Bonds, who the scap load lasted so long in the back knee group, he gave himself he, he 50, track him for 50 feet. Absolutely. If you, if you have a guy that, from the mechanical standpoint, has to commit early, very little shot to, right. to succeed a little breaking ball. So with Absolutely. my hitters, once we understand a sequence that you're talking about, I tell them uh, we don't worry about pitch type and pitch location. Right on, we man. worry about right getting on. on plane. And if we're on plane and we're late, then we're going to right. If we're on plane and early, we're yeah. going and to And I don't right. care. I, say, we, we have, I have a middle gap, you got a, a gap approach, and wherever the ball goes, it goes. Go. If that ball's in, and I hit it up the middle, there's Great. no shame in that. Right. Yeah. And if it's and away, it's a, and, and, and that's going to happen, because you're going to be on time less that you're going to be hopefully mechanically correct. Right. You can be mechanically correct and miss time of ball in this. That's baseball. So once you get the kid to answer kind of what he was saying to help, but once you get the kid up to top. Yeah, I get mechanically right first before I ever put in pitch recognition. And it will correct that vision. Yeah. Which It'll I think help. is a vision It'll problem, is yeah. an adjustability problem in committing the pitches way too early. Yeah. And that, that's why you hear me say over and over again, I, I'm often kind of a negative stereotype as a big mechanics guy. And I think that's a, a knock on me from guys that don't know mechanics. But if I can get a guy that can't get right, the timing portion of the swing is so much easier. Right. And that's what you're saying. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. But you got to focus on both. You can't just be strictly, I'm a mechanics guy and I'm a coach. Or I'm, I'm, a, you know, I'm just a BP guy. you got to be able to do both. you got to be able to attack approach. you got to be able to attack pitch recognition. Of course, you can't do That's what I was talking about before you came in. Where the pressure is on the foot. Like you have to I dissect the foot into three parts. I got instep pressure, heel pressure, which I talk about heel pressure once we get into foot down, and toe pressure. I want to cut the toes off all together. So when you get guys that are diving in, usually it's because they're getting weight on the toes. When they get weight on the toes, their shoulders and head go forward. Now for the, the body to catch itself and, and feel stable again, it's gonna put the foot back underneath the head. So if I start toe pressure, next part, head and shoulders go forward. Next part, foot's going to catch it. So you've got guys that are diving in, usually because they're starting with toe pressure. they got to start with instep pressure. Tell them to cut their toes off. So I say, I want you to feel like, almost like you're pressing your arches to the ground. Press the arches to the ground. Now, they don't have to be over-exaggerated, they got to be comfortable. But I don't, I don't have toe pressure right now. My toes are on the ground, but I have instep pressure, I have arch pressure. You lay the foot the same way? What? Your, lay, your, your stride foot? Yeah, I prefer a flatter stride foot. Again, it's going to change from individual to individual. I mean, Pujols is one of the best hitters in the game. He's up onto his tiptoe. I wouldn't teach a kid that. But I prefer that they go ball the foot, get the ball heel down as, as quickly as possible. Meaning, I want the toe to heel relationship to be very low. I don't want the toe to heel relationship to be very, be very high in an in a ideal world. Now, again, your hitters are going to do what's what their style is. So if I have a guy that's style is that, typically you have to start him a little sooner because it's going to take longer for him to get his, his heel down. So that's how I say you kind of got to coach up to your kid. Driving forward, put your front foot down as opposed to reaching out. Yeah, I, 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 I'm always careful with the amount of momentum or amount of push I have going forward. I, I want it more just to be the body controlled, or I call I say glide a lot. Right. Because it, there is, there's a, a very fine line. You know, we want our guys to be centered at foot down. I teach 60-40 back, knowing that amateur hitters most of the time are going to err on that and end up 50-50. I used to teach 50-50 exclusively, and very few of them could do it, so they're always forward. So it gives me a little wiggle room for error. Right. So I'm very careful of the amount of push I get forward because when I do flip drills, and I give a, a bad flip, I, I want a guy to pause on his take. I want to see where you're at foot down. Now, I'm not saying he had intent. I mean, he was getting ready to commit. Oh, I wanted that, but no, I didn't. That heel's going to come off the ground. But in a true take, if I wasn't going to offer that pitch, and I recognized it early, I want that back heel still on the ground. But the key right. was you recognize it. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, if the guy had intent, you know, sometimes the lower body's going to get a running start. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't want that one. You know, and that heel's going to come off the ground because his hip chat's going to start to go. But the upper body is still resistant. And that's where the sequence really benefits you, as you were saying. It gives me adjustability because I, oh, no, I didn't want that one. My hands haven't moved. I've always taught hips lead to hands with the kids. Uh -huh. And, you know, we get the parents that they're, they're raised with a dad who thinks throw the hands, mm -hmm. throw the hands, throw the hands. And, you know, we talk about it. We get them to try to do the best they can. Hips lead the hands. And, and a lot of time, I have, just as a teacher, as a coach, I have a hard time telling them whether, telling whether they're really doing it or not. Yeah, and that's why I say, I, is my a fine eye. line in there between real which fine. one starts first? And real fine, and real fine. That's why how do you, how do you I use a camera all the time. I do not leave home without a high-speed camera. 
I use a Casio, any of you guys are interested in these, I use a Casio ZR300. It's about the size of a phone. I didn't bring it with me today. It fits in my back pocket. I keep it in my pant pocket. And so when I'm in a lesson or something like that, for me, and I don't get super analytical with a kid of saying that oh, you know, your back elbow's in the wrong spot. It's not what it's about. But for me, to see if what cues I need to use with them helps me out. And even at 120 frames per second, you know, it's, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot to it. So you're saying the drills you do, the drills should get them in sequence. Then it makes that, you don't have to worry about it. It does, but you still got to check it. So again, I, either my vision just isn't as good as I'm getting older, but I just, I, yeah, it's happens too fast. You're asking, you're trying to break down with your own eye, the fastest thing that happens in all sports. Can't do it. So I, I use the same all the time.